Howdy folks, it's Tall here and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to start another bush trip today and um, I also have to talk about some travel news of my own which I never thought I would have the opportunity to speak of and we'll talk about that during the bush trip so those of you who are here for story time you're going to get your stories those of you who are here for the bush trips you're going to get your bush trip two audiences in one so let's see let's choose one I think I only have two left at the time of this recording um, which is long before you're watching this. I think I'm, yeah, I'm recording this in mid-May, and I think you're watching this at the end of July, if I look at my upload schedule correctly on my other monitor. So you're going to see trips in here that exist as you watch this, that don't exist as I play this. Um, World Update 9 just released. So that's when I'm doing this. You're probably, we probably have World Update 10 by now, about the time this is out, So and a sim update in between. So there you go, that just gives you some context. So let's start at the top here, all 100% complete there, complete there, we have two to do here, and complete. So save Sicily for last, because um, my dad's family's from Sicily, and we'll talk about that then. For now, let's do a Pyrenees excursion, which is gonna be a lot of mountain flying. I hope I'm awake enough for this. Let's see what happens when I click on it. All right, two and a half hours, so it's gonna take me about five. <laughs> four, four legs, okay. So this will definitely be a one leg per video bush trip. Um, I could combine these and edit them down because I want to try to make these shorter and after I edit them and talk less, but I don't know. Talking through what I'm doing is kind of the point of the video. That's what my channel is about is we're learning this together. We're talking through it. So I don't know. We'll see how I feel. Alrighty, we're in the Cub Crafters X Cub again. They weren't me in that. In, no, two, two flights ago? Two trips ago we were, so we get to come back to this plane. And um, let's see, let's read about it. This bush trip, which spans the full width of the Iberian Peninsula, explores the story Pyrenees Mountains. I'm pretty sure it's, maybe it's Pyrenees. I don't know. The journey begins on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea at the Gulf of Roses, then travels the entire range of peaks from the southeast to the northwest, and ends at the waters of the Bay of Biscay. I'm getting kind of nervous about the mountain flying. We'll discuss mountain flying and options for bush trips once we get in the air here, once we get on the in the main screen. Uh, from the cockpit, you'll admire all the best that this spine of peaks displays, including the ridges, valleys, and summits of the Pyrenees themselves, to the small villages, fields, and forests that complete this wonderful Iberian mosaic. And then we don't worry about back on track because you know what we're doing, and there are no achievements as far as I know. The time of this recording, the only ones I have left are the 500 and 1,000 hours. I already have way over 500 hours, but you all know in the beginning when the sim was out, it wasn't counting our time. So my first, like, 300 hours was missed. But anyway, um, let's see what we're landing at. Okay, so the first airport, pretty easy. Second, oh boy. This is going to be toughy. And if you land too soon, you're in the water. And if you land late, you're in the water. Oh, my word. And it's the longest leg. So if you crash, you got to redo it. Okay, um, that's going to make me nervous as I'll get out. Not only trying to find it, but trying to land on it. We have, well, it's when the, well, we're in the cub, but if you remember from the last time, this is a tricky little thing to land ever since some updates. So it bounces a lot, and if you use your brakes, you nosedive. So you got to land like right there and be on those brakes and not nosedive into... Okay, that's going to be... That's scary. That is outright scary. And, okay, that should be okay if that's still really short. And the big one. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting bush trip. I've actually been avoiding this one because of it's all mountains. And I kind of had an idea there's some scary runways. So this is going to be very interesting. Um, let's get inside. We'll talk about a few things that I normally talk about on the first leg of each trip. And then I'll talk about my trip as we're getting in, my real life trip as we're getting in the air here. All right, we will repair and refuel like always. And we have the... We have the issue where the frame rates are crappy on the ground, and then as soon as we get in the air, they're going to be amazing. It drives me nuts, but that's how it is. Uh, once at a flap, we will go outside in a second here and see what we're looking at. Let's zoom. Whoop! No, I forgot how to do this. Apparently, let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Um, so we're going. I looked at the preview image. We're going across like this along the mountain range here, but according to the preview overlay image while it's loading we actually stay south of the mountains we're actually not going into the peaks like this 
We're actually going to stay south. There's still being some mountains, look at. But we're going to be south of the main range, so the main, um, the main range will be to the right of us. All right, so let's zoom that back in a little bit, so at least we see the airport. Let's hop outside and see what we're looking at. This way, please. So there's the mountain range. We're going to be just south of this the whole time. That's what it said. But we'll have to see. <laughs> Let's see what really happens. I'm nervous about that second leg, but that's okay. Wow, look at that. Autogen, the European Autogen is amazing. So as we stare and gawk at this, I know it's not a sightseeing simulator, but it kind of is for me. So anyway, it's a travel simulator for me. <laughs> well, it's a flight simulator. So ways to do these mountain trips. It's like go-kart track. Ways to do the mountain trips. What you can do is you can set your altitude above the mountains and just cruise along the tops of the mountains and then look down as you go, right? That's the easiest thing to do. The other thing you can do is stay at train level so you can see stuff better and then, you know, take the valleys instead to get around, which works, but it'll add a lot of time and you could easily get lost because your nav log tells you to go a certain heading for a certain amount of time, but if you're stuck in the valleys winding around, that might not be... Um, you might get lost if we don't know where we're going, right? And since we've never done this before, we don't know where we're going. So we'll do a mix of the two, all righty? Now, as far as autopilot, if I were not making video content, I would hand fly everything. But because I'm making video content, hand flying everything makes it difficult to give sightseeing shots. And I tend to talk way too much because I have a hiccup again, sorry. I talk too much because I'm um, in the cockpit the whole time flying. So... We do autopilot so we can sightsee basically whenever we can, but in the mountains, they do have to do a lot of hand flying to navigate the train. So it's going to be a mix there. And lastly, because this is leg one, we do use, have the GPS option, um, as you can see here. And if you pull out the VFR map, we do have the GPS track. Now, if you stay in the sim, you can keep the GPS the entire time, but as soon as you leave, not the sim, the bush trip, as soon as you leave the bush trip, then, um, then you lose it. So that's up to you. If you want to do it all at once, you can keep this. But I like to use it for the first one and then leave and come back so we're forced to do it manually, manual navigation after that. But anyway, we're going from Leap to CD, I think. Is that what it says? Yeah, so that just gives you an idea of what we're doing here for the first leg. And I have to resume every time, but there you go. Pretty simple. The second one... Oh good, at least the second one that's in the water isn't in the mountains. But still, that freaks me the heck out. <laughs> we'll worry about that when we get there. So anyway, that's what we need to talk about. So, um, if you missed that quick introduction, I apologize. Um, I know not everybody watches every bus trip, but I do say the same things every time. So I would kind of like to do a mix of, sometimes I do more detailed discussion, other times I don't, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, that's just how it is. So anyway, let's get going right away. No, we're not. <laughs> We're not going to keep going right away. We have a lot to do. We have to read about where we're going. We have to set up autopilot. So flight director, first of all, we're going to use nav because we can for the first leg. Um, where do we add already for altitude? 10. And we're going to go up to say how high these go in here. Um, doesn't give us an altitude, so we'll have to just guess. It's green for a while, then it goes to brown. So we want to go, let's see, let's start at 4,000, and then we're going to have to climb significantly later on throughout the lake. But let's just start at 4,000 just for now. Then we'll climb. We'll do vertical speed, and we'll do, uh, we'll do 1,000 feet for a minute. Let's see if this is in order this time. If you remember the previous bush trip, the Portugal journey, all this was mixed up, and it was a big wash. We just set the autopilot heading and just flew it because none of this was right. None of it was right. So let's see if this is right. So far, well, it is good after launching. So, so far, so good. <laughs> after launching from Empiria Brava Airport, head north to Aiguamos de Emporda, a national park in Spain's Caledonia. Caledonia that protects wetlands formed just inland of the Bay of Roses. So this must be the Bay of Roses. And we're going to go to the wetlands, which is where we are, basically, 42 seconds, right? So we're not going to worry about setting the heading to 349 degrees, because we're just going to take off, which is basically 349. And then we're going to immediately, pretty much, go to 258. So let's do 258. 
for three minutes after that. And again, we need to use the stopwatch on my phone for this. Well, the first leg, we're just going to follow GPS, but um, otherwise, we're basically, basically in the future, legs going to use my phone. Because if we start this stopwatch and we close the window, when we come back, it starts over. Just like if we collapse these to keep track and we close it, come back, they expand. Now we can minimize this, but then that's in our way and it looks ugly. So I'm frustrated. I know they're supposed to collapse and I know this is supposed to work because of up until I think Sim Update 7 or World Update 7, they collapsed and stayed collapsed and the stopwatch stayed working. So I know it's supposed to be that way. It just isn't and it's very frustrating. But anyway, so for this leg, we don't really need to worry about the stopwatch on my phone because we'll just use GPS and it'll have a timer right up here. Otherwise, um, normally we would, and then this I can't find out how to access that. I can't figure it out. And if you've told me in comments, it's been three months and I haven't read them yet because they don't exist yet. I'm that far ahead. Okie dokie. So right after the wetlands, we're going to go to Figueres. Figueres, a birthplace of surreal artist Salvador Dali lies to the west southwest okay so we're gonna go to the birthplace three minutes after the whatchamacallit the wetlands and if we want to because we're using gps we can just look where it is and in this case it's right there where my pointer is on the map and when we get there then we'll read about the next greatest thing so let's see let's do the parking brake a few times see what happens let's hold the brake so we can rev this up Although I think the runaway is way long enough. Parking brake is not engaged. I swear every time I do it, it doesn't engage. I don't do it, it's engaged, whatever. All right, let's get on the runway and it torques to the left because it's supposed to. He's got to be ready for it and here we go. Look how long this took to take off. And we have that grass runway coming up. Just because you can land on it doesn't mean you can take off from it. <laughs> brake stop the wheel. Flaps coming in and... We're immediately going to engage autopilot only because I want to see. Ooh, that's a great shot. I want to see these wetlands, which are right up there. But you can't see it because they're too low. But right up here are the wetlands. You see it? See how cool that is? Let's look back where we came from. And then when we start heading to the birthplace, I'm already going to get into sightseeing without my voice just because for this bush trip, I want to see what happens if I talk less. See how it goes. I know 80-ish percent of you, based on like a survey I did, like how much I talk, and some want me to talk more. There's a small percentage that want you to shut my mouth, but I'm never going to shut my mouth. So <laughs> that's the niche of my channel. So sorry. <laughs> anyway, there's the awesome city in the background, and see we're already turning to the birthplace. Here are your wetlands, right below us. Pretty straightforward. So. I'm going to give you some sightseeing, and I'll meet you at the birthplace of Salvador Dali. And if you want to know what sightseeing means, it means that, bring back the props a little bit, I cut down the time it takes to get somewhere significantly, but you don't miss anything in the scenery by the way I stitch it together. So I will see you in, well, it says four minutes, but that's going to be way less once we level off here. I'll see you in a couple minutes after some sightseeing at the birthplace of Salvador Dali, see you in a little bit.
All right, we're over the birthplace and we're turning. So let's look outside so we can see the birthplace. Here we go. The birthplace, stadium and all, couple pools. And um, I wanted to look at this sooner, but I got too caught up looking at the mountains. So there is the birthplace of Salvador Dali. And now it's immediately time to read about the next greatest thing, which is only four minutes out, and it is the Boadella Reservoir, or the Boladea Reservoir, northwest of Figueres, over a patchwork of fields, and then foothills of the Pyrenees lies Boadala, or Boadaya Reservoir, which was formed by damming the Muga River. All right, cool. So that must be it right there. Off the nose, it seems pretty obvious to me. And then we're doing returning. Um, okay, then we're turning west again. This calm, make sure we don't hit the mountains. We might need to start climbing though. Uh, yeah, we do. Let's go up to six. Let's go up to seven thousand. That's so high though to come back down. Um, let's go to, all the way to seven. Yeah, and let's bring this thing up. Only about six hundred feet per minute though. I think we'll be good there. And um, look out the windows. Ooh, that's really nice. That is really nice. So is that. And there's a reservoir. That has to be the reservoir. Seems pretty obvious to me. Let's check with our map since we can for this leg. Yeah, there's a reservoir. And then we don't quite get to the highest peaks, which are those. So we don't get there. So I think our is going to be fine. We do go into the mountains, and we do have quite the elevation for our airport. So, I think we'll be good there. Um, just being very careful. I don't want to get complacent just because I've done so many bus trips now. Um, I don't want to get complacent about it. But at the same time, it's not that difficult. Um, so, let's see, you can look beyond the Pyrenees here, look at that, where it gets to be lower again, that's kind of cool. I'm going to do some research on the Pyrenees. I hope, I'm hoping to see the Pyrenees. Pyrenees, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Again, as in America, I like, as a United Statesian. <laughs> My world geography is way better than average, but I see everything in text. I don't speak the thing very often. So I'll come across the place or word or something that I read and I know about, but I can't say it because I've never said it out loud before. So there's a reservoir. You can see the train climbing very quickly. So it looks kind of strange because it is climbing very quickly. Um, so that's kind of a weird angle to look at, but it's kind of cool too. But this right here is pretty high itself. I suppose like 1,200 feet or something at least. So that's pretty cool. Otherwise, um, we're going to go over here. I think seven grand will be okay then, because if you look out the window, I think we're good. I think we'll be okay, because we're still climbing. Yeah, I think seven grand will be great. As long as we're not going over here, which we're not. And here comes our wind and our train turbulence. Very cool. So anyway, this so far seems to be like we will just take it at altitude and see what we can see from altitude. I don't... See at this point, I know we just got started on the bush trip, but at this point I don't see us staying in the valleys to see things more closely and going up and down to get over train. I think we're just going to cruise at train. But, you know, I could change my mind at any second, but that's what I'm thinking. Otherwise, uh, we got 1500 to go to cruise, which will be good. Um, and we're looking for the reservoir, which will be there in 39 seconds, it said. And then after I read about the next leg, I'll tell you about my real, real life trip. Um, which I'm very excited about, which I can't believe is happening to me, which is very cool. Alrighty, let's see here. There's a reservoir. That looks pretty darn cool. They got some sandy beaches on a reservoir. That's nice. I wonder what swimming is like there. Well, let's um, get back inside the cockpit. There we go. Okay, let's see what's next. After the reservoir, we have cross into France and test turtles French to visit La Menere, a small mountain village west of the Pyren Pyrenees. So, wait, did I say small mountain village of the Pyrenees? Six and a half minutes out, there's a small village which fortunately or unfortunately we can just look at our map and see where it is it's going to be at the tip of this river here nope 
tip of that river because we've got that one, one, two, that one, one, two. So not quite on the map yet, but we'll get there. Okay, so there's going to be a small mountain village coming up. All right, so there is the mountain range from the cockpit of the airplane. That looks so cool. So my real life trip. We're going to be at altitude here. Okay. My real life trip. So my family, just the four of us this time, not just, but just the four of us, my wife and two kids and myself, are going to Cancun, Mexico, which I know isn't like the most exotic thing in the world to most people, but we are going to Mexico. And by the time you watch this video, we have already been there and we're back. So sorry to ruin the magic of behind the scenes stuff, but as when I look at my upload schedule, when you watch this video, we're already back from the trip, even though it's like a month and a half out. <laughs> kind of funny, I know. Um, I'm excited. It'll be my first time out of the country. I'm calling it my first exotic trip, although it's not terribly exotic to go to Cancun because it's so Americanized. Um, my kids are nervous because it's a different country. I'm like, just think of taking a hotel city in the United States and just plopping in Mexico. It's quite Americanized. Um, I told them we're not going to walk around and drive to non-touristy parts of Mexico. They want to. I'm like, well, we're not going to. <laughs> we're going to stay around the hotel. <laughs> but anyway, so this is my first trip. My first trip out of the country. Um, so you always hear me talk about how my wife has been on five exotic trips recently, and she's probably been on over 20 international trips in her lifetime, at least 20. This is my first one. I'm excited. Um, the however, though, the caveat is we are going with the children. Of course, I love my children. You know, um, people who know me, like, they know how I'm, like, father first type thing, you know, like, totally into my kids and my family. However, I am, I'm, I'm going to tell you everything here. I am a little envious that my wife has been not on the 20 trip, whatever, that but the five trips since we've had kids, she has gone on without kids. And um, we're taking the kids with us, which I'm excited about. It's just, I'm like, mm, I kind of wish we were going without kids because I've never been on a trip without children. And she's been on five huge trips without children. But I'll get over it. This first trip will be with kids. But I told her I won't do a trip like this again until we get a chance to go, or I get a chance to go without kids. So big trip coming up big trip for me because of my health it's in fact we're really kind of scared because my health has been declining lately so we'll see how this goes <laughs> but anyway <laughs> first big trip Cancun Mexico Cancun Mexico very excited I wasn't at first I'll admit because of my health and because we're going with two crazy kids I wasn't excited at first but I'm getting excited and I just told her though the next trip the next huge trip has to be without kids I want to go to Jamaica with my wife or something with all children. Don't know how we'd afford it, but I want to. <laughs> so anyway, that's really cool. Um, because we've already been there and we're already back, I can tell you where we're going because I'm not there anymore. Um, we are going to the Wyndham Ultra Family Resort. So it's one of the nice ones. Normally we're like budget people. Like if there's 10 hotels, we'll pick the cheapest one. But we're actually going to like the nicest one just because of the way the deal worked out and the timing and because we wanted family oriented first um everyone else i've told about the trip are like what are you talking about why are you going to mexico with your kids it's just drinking for free and hanging out at the beach i'm like not where we're going where we're going is focused on the kids so oh my gosh we're going to run into more mountains we better climb um, it's focused on the kids, so there's shows every night, there's a kids area, inside and outside, although the inside part is closed because of COVID, but the outside part is open. Um, so there's stuff for the kids of all ages, from like 5 years old to 17 years old or something. And um, there's shows every night, buffets are open from like 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., except for an hour here and there to change the food. There's like seven restaurants ranging from wear your swimsuit to dress nicely and everything in between. Um, outside taco bars, like all this stuff. Focus on the kids. So I'm not worried about the kids. <laughs> They're going to have more fun than us. Um, my wife wants to go to excursions. My 11-year-old wants to go deep sea diving or deep sea fishing. 
And we want to go to some Mayan stuff. There's some Mayan stuff right by the resort, but then the big stuff is two hours away. So we'll see what we end up doing. At the time of this recording, I've already done it or not done it. I mean, at the time of this recording, I don't know what we're doing. By the time you watch this, I've either done it or not done it. So in a couple months, you'll see videos of me talking about it. Um, anyway, I'm blabbing a lot and I'm going to keep blabbing. But here we are. We are reaching the small mountain village, which should be... I mean, it could be that. That's possibly it, but that doesn't look like a village. That looks more like a building. But I guess that could be it. That could be it. Um, there's none of this stuff because the GPS will put it right over, or we'll go right over the GPS. Look at that ravine. That reminds me of Minecraft, if nothing else. Holy moly. Um, what's it say? Oh no, it still says you have two minutes, so that can't be it. Okay, um, let's keep looking for it. Anywho, what else? I don't really have much else to say about the trip, other than to sum it up. My first exotic trip in my life. I'm not envious that my wife has done 20 and this is my first one. I don't care about that. But I'm a bit envious that she's gone on so many without children, and my first big trip out of the country is going to be with two crazy kids. But that's fine. I love my kids. I'm a father first type person. And it'll be fine. It'll be great. In fact, I would probably be bored without my kids if you want to think about it that way. So, um, anyway, I just, the next one has to be without my kids. I told my wife that. I think this is our village here. I think. Maybe. Um, and the other thing is it's family friendly. Like, it's family first. Like, you know. Um, yeah, that was definitely it. Alrighty, cool. So let's see what is next after La Manier, French place I can't pronounce. Camprodon, maybe. Or is it Camprodon? Depends on the language. Oh, back into Spain, so it's Camprodon. Because remember, without an accent, it's always a second. It's always a penultimate syllable without an accent. So Camprodon. Turn to the southwest, cross back into Spain, and visit the small village of Camprodon. Um, and that's three and a half minutes out, and that's POI 5, so let's pull up our map since we can. And look for POI 5, which is where in terms of this water, right there on the Y. Okie dokie. And then we still have some terrain, but as long as we're above it, which we are now at 8,000 feet, perhaps. I don't know, we might have to climb a little bit more. We might need to climb a little bit more. Anyway, so we're looking for, is it a small village in this area, or what did it say about the village? small village. So we're going to look for a small village on the water, and then I'll talk with you again. So enjoy the silence, if that's what you're into. Um, my story time has ended, if that's what you're into. <laughs> no judging. Whatever you're into, as long as it's safe, doesn't hurt anybody. I don't care what you're into. And I'll see you in a couple minutes. Alrighty, there is the Y. Let, oh, there's a village right there. Let's just look at it from the cockpit this time, just to have immersion effect. There's our little village. Can you read about it without blocking it? The next thing, yes, so there's your village. The next thing after Comprodon is... Um, are we still in Spain? Ribes de Fraser. Ribes de Fraser. Fly to the west to the town of Ribes de Fraser, which lies at the confluence of the Fraser, Rigard, and the Sigidel, Sigidel, Sigidel rivers. 
all-important waterways of the Pyrenees. That's four minutes out, and let's see on our trusty map. Oh boy, are we going to clear this? I think we are. Barely. Look at that. Part of me wants to stay at this altitude just to see how close we can get, but the realism, the realist in me, says we need to climb to 9,000 feet. In fact, we're going to climb to 92. And what we're going to do is we're going to do vertical speed and we're going to nose up ever so slightly. And then if we bring back conditioner, do we get more power? I don't think so. I think we're pretty much... Oh, wait, yes, we do. There we go. That's what's supposed to happen. Sweet. We'll come back and then 10%. No, maybe not. Yeah, we got a little bit more power when we did that. Just a little, but it's enough to... There we go. We're going to keep... We're just going to crank everything here. Okay, a little bit more power out of it. Good. Just be very careful. All right, and then the next thing was to look at... Um, um, it's POI 6, so let's look at our map, because we can again, just because we can. POI 6 is... On a river? Yep, when all the rivers come together, which is right here, which is what they said. That's exactly what they said. So let's hop outside here, reset our view, because it gets all wonky when you turn. And just check this out from down below. Boy, we're barely going to cover that terrain. I believe it's going to put us right through here, but still, we got to be very careful. Anyway, this is amazing. All right, cool. Mountain flying is a little tricky. You can't do these as your first bush trip, but... Um, you have to modify the plane through them first. It's not just setting and forgetting it. I want to climb a little bit more steeply, but then we get into danger here. Alrighty, cool. So we are going to get to the intersection of all these rivers. And I'll see you then. Enjoy the sights on the way. All right, we're already reaching where the rivers come together. You can see the North-South River there, and I think you can see it out this one too. Yep, going along here, and we're right over the East-West River. So we have to hop outside to see anything, and there you go. All the rivers come together right at that town. How cool is that? That'd be so fun to live there. And then the mountains right up your back door. Oh my gosh, how cool. All righty, what is next? I'm still not satisfied with our altitude, but we'll see here. Oh, and you can see right the tall mountains out this side. With the roads going up them. We're still below train level over there, which is so cool. It would be helpful if it rendered in all the way. There, it just popped in. Oh, there we go. Even better. Okay, thank goodness. The rendering um, was a little bit behind. All righty. Um, we're turning, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Oh, let's turn more because I don't want to hit those hills. Oh, dear. I mean, okay, so this right here is this. I'm pretty sure we're not going over that. I'm pretty sure we're going over here. There we go. That's better. There we go. So POI 7 is pretty quick right before this. And then we got one more. Then we land in here somewhere in this big old mess. Okay, so let's read about what's happening here. Um, we're going to... Um, let's see. Uh-oh. We already did that one, didn't we? Figure Ace, the birthplace of surreal artist. Figure Ace, birth. <sighs> okay, so what I think is happening, which I think I learned from the Portugal trip, is the bold is correct. The descriptions are wrong. So the heading, the timing, the distance, all that is correct. The bold is correct. The description is wrong. So next we're going to Fornails de la Montaña which is not the birthplace of Salvador, because he cannot be, unless he's reincarnated and he was born next to where he was born the first time. I doubt it. <laughs> but anyway, that's the wrong description, but we're going there. And then after that, we're going to Elp um, and lie the small village. Okay, so this is here. That's fine. 
wait okay wait they're just off by one okay so the description for this is down here a small village which features beautiful stone architecture built into the mountainsides like minecraft i know i relate everything to minecraft that's just how i am sorry <laughs> so we're going to look for a small village built into the mountainside with stone and that should be right at the end of this water i think is that what it was showing us this is before the end of the water we're almost there already and then after that I'm going to go to the village of Alp, home to a small ski resort, La Molina. So hopefully we can make out the ski resort in the banks of the mountain. And then we land at an airport, which is La Cerdania, I guess. But it does tell us anything else about the airport. So the title is correct. It just doesn't tell us anything else. Other than we can see, it should be pretty easy to find in the field with the asphalt strip. So there we go. That concludes our reading portion <laughs> of the bush strip. And um, how long was this supposed to be? 28 minutes? My recording is going on 46 minutes. That's hilarious. I know we had a long introduction, but whatever. Alrighty, let's look at this together because we're about to reach the next place already. And again, I love when you can see tree lines in mountains. I don't know why. I just think it's so cool that there's this definitive line where the trees just can't grow. And it's not necessarily because of snow either because trees will grow in snow. It could be amount of snow, though. But mainly it's the wind and the temperature and the, um, the um, there's three parts. There's the wind, there's the temperature, and there's the, is it literally the air pressure? The air's too thin? I can't remember. But anyway, I just like how it's super well defined, right? Because a lot of times in nature, like, you can say, okay, this is a cutoff, but it's a gradual cutoff and it's not consistent. And there's our village, by the way, our tiny village. We're moving on to the next two villages. Um, it's, you know, like a general, just a gradual cutoff of things, right? Like it's, but then at the same time, you have like snowfall in the Midwest. If you're an airplane, there's like a definitive line where the snow just stops. It doesn't pitter out. It's like snowy and then not snow. And you can see the line. It's really cool. If you're an airplane in the winter in the Midwest, upper Midwest. Um, but this makes, this is super cool too. Like this line right here, just bam. There's a line that says, nope, can't grow there. Same thing on the side can't grow there it's just so cool i love it it's so fascinating to me and then these plateaus up here like this man and when you're in the mountains which i've been in the rocky mountains you can be up 12,000 feet 8,000 feet 7,000 feet but you don't realize it because you're within the peaks so the peaks don't look that big because you're within them but from afar you can see how big they are it's really cool it's really cool i think our colorado trip was one of my favorite family trips um again with the kids of course Alrighty, so let's see we're looking for alp now which is which is if i zoom in because we have an airport coming up is it this one to zoom in zoom in please there we go alp is right after these dots water and then bam our runway so we need to be pretty careful we need to start descending now for sure because we're going into that valley over there well this valley in front of our nose so let's start descending, and then once you get over that ridge just below us, we'll descend even more dramatically. Um, I don't know what the altitude of the airport is. I really wish they told us airport elevation um, in the sim, but they don't. So let's just bring this down to 3. I'm pretty sure it's not 3,000 feet. But let's put it to 35 just so we come down. Vertical speed. Let's nose down pretty aggressively, like 1,100 feet. Bring back throttle so we don't get into the yellow and have to redo the leg for stressing the aircraft. I'm looking at my predictive tape here to tell us if we're going to get to the yellow and bring it back throttles gradually so we don't hit the yellow. And we're pretty good. That's, oh, there we go. Train turbulence. Okay, so we're coming down into this valley. I don't see the airport yet, although I should be able to because it's right in here somewhere. So we're definitely going to have to corkscrew because not only do we have to descend, there it is right there. See, we're almost on top of it. Not only do we have to descend, we need to slow down so i think what we'll do is we'll get towards the airport so we can see it and then we'll go out here in the valley and take advantage of the valley and then land makes sense so let's do some final outside shots because we'll be hand flying here in a moment there's the airport right here and then um we will hand fly it in in a moment here look at that i love being below the train it's so cool to fly below the train there we go let's get a better idea where we are Look at that. Oh, this is awesome. 
I'm glad that the second scary or the runways and the scary runways in the second leg so we can just get over with all right we're getting a little fast now as we come over the mountain so let's kill autopilot and let's um well that's right it trims so weird let's actually let's get a little closer to the airport um to the side though so i can see it bring my props so we don't break those and start our turn there we go we're perpendicular to it and the airport should be right up there it is. See, we're about to go over it actually. So let's bring our heading bug 90 degrees to the side here. Like this. Come on, 90 degrees, please. What? There we go. There. Okay, cool. So now we know that airport heading, runway heading, sorry. So we can deal with it accordingly. Okay, let's see. We're at 6,000 feet. Yeah, I bet it's only at like 5,000. I'm curious to see what it is, but. Anyway, you're stuck with me now for the rest of this leg, chit-chatting away. The airport is right under our tail, behind us. We will come out here to this valley, probably out to that city, then make our turn around. And then we'll descend even more, but we will keep our speed up until we turn around, because we have plenty of time to slow down. I'm not worried about that. I just want to get low enough that we can land without having to go around. And enjoying the scenery as we go here. Look at this. How amazing is that? It's not the 11 out of 10 that it was a couple trips ago, but it's still good. It's still good scenery. All right, let's slow down but not descend. We're going to nose up to slow down and bring throttles back so we don't ascend. Just because we're pretty close to the airport when we make this U-turn. And we might have to come down rather quickly because I'm not sure how high we are above the airport. So I just want to slow down because that's the other component is slowing down because we're really fast. So let's get into flap range. We can speed back up again once we see how far away we are. But I really want to slow down. And I'm looking at my heading bug to get an idea of the runway orientation and it should pop into view any second. And there it is. We'll put it between the front pillars right now. Do you see it? Dead center off the nose. And we are pretty close and we do have to come down a lot. So we're going to keep our speed pretty slow. I've got props forward and conditioners forward. And um, throttles all the way back and we're still gaining a lot of speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to rely on coming down quickly then leveling off way early to bleed off that speed. The other way would be to slip it. Um, but I don't want to slip it if I can help it because I'm scared of stressing the aircraft and having to redo the leg. And we're kind of fast. I did want to be in flap range here, but I think we'll be plenty fine once I level off. In just a moment, fine. I'll look out the window. I'll look at that bridge across that river. That's awesome. Okay, and now we really got to concentrate because we are going really fast. So hopefully, hopefully, oh yeah, look at that. 3500 is going to be exactly where it is because it called off 500 at 4000. What kind of crazy guess was that? 100% guess, just based on experience. And holy cow, that's strange. That is so weird. All right, first set of flaps. Now we'll get our speed cut down. Very good. And second set of flaps. And on the throttle here, because we are descending way too quickly, so we'll use a throttle to stop descending. And I'm going to keep our speed about where it is. We will slow down right before that runway, though. We're going to touch down pretty much at stall. Hopefully we don't bounce. One bounce I've read in real life is actually acceptable, which I don't know how I didn't know that for 20-some years of doing this, but apparently it is. And um, so that's what we're going for. But mainly I just want to stop without hitting the prop. So here we go. Whoops, yeah, we got a little bit too low too soon, which I don't care. I'm just practicing my short field because of that other runway coming up. And don't land on the wheel. Don't land on the tail wheel. And there's our one bounce. And there we go on the brakes all the way back. Don't ground loop. Okay, it looks like I'm doing fine, but I'm actually fighting this. I'm fighting the rudders to not ground loop, and I'm fighting the brakes to not hit the props with the yoke all the way back the entire time. Oh my gosh, didn't it say 28 minutes? So it took us 20 minutes longer than it was supposed to. Which is fine. Alrighty. Subscribe so you know when the next leg comes out. Like so other people know we exist.
and I'll see you for leg two next time.